Di Cristofano writes, can you talk about Numi Rapace not being an alien, alien covenant? Can we talk about Numi? Yeah, this came out. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah. that's right. That's right. Well, I, I, I'll say I think it makes sense because, because it's not Prometheus 2 anymore. Now it's Alien Covenant and they're kind of like jettisoning whatever the script of Par Prometheus Paradise Lost or whatever that script was going to be. Yeah. It's now a brand new script. It's a brand new crew of people coming to find this, you know, engineer's planet. This is the outline they've already said. And they find this one uh, robotic character, David, and uh, played by Fassbender. So uh, I'm sure we'll find out what happened to the character that Nomi played. But uh, I think they're moving forward and they're going to lock it more into the Aliens universe and less so about the outer realm of the Aliens universe. Can I ask a quick question? Because I didn't read the initial story. Are they saying... A, Numi Pace is not returning, or they did he confirm that the character itself is not returning? Both. I think it, both. They did confirm both. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, I actually really like this, and I, I, I'm i a big fan of hers. I, I think she's a great actress. I just didn't happen to like any of those characters that were in in that, minus Michael Fassbender, um, in, in Prometheus. And I love the fact that we're finally going to get confirmation that it's a tie-in to the Alien franchise. That's what I wanted from Prometheus. That's what I want from these brand new characters. And I think it's a nice wash to not, because there are certainly people who enjoyed, I believe you enjoyed yeah, Prometheus. There are people who enjoyed Prometheus very much. It was certainly not a stinker, but I think that it's a way to say to everybody, a bit of a fresh start here still not disregarding what we just did in prometheus but this is going to continue the alien franchise and lead into the movies that you know and here's some brand new actors to right, do they're it. saying so there's okay three of them yeah they're like I'm already cool saying we're right. doing not yeah. just one off or three so they're creating a new alien trilogy so to speak so. yeah all right what's next what do you think don't care didn't like <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not as big on new pace as a lot of people and i didn't like prometheus so meh <laughs> All right, what's next? All right, Aaron writes, how many, of you, <laughs> how many of you guys have taken acting classes? I Yeah, that was my career. Yeah, well, when I was in uh, high school, I was in theater. I used to do a lot of theater. I took one or two classes when I was in college. But, uh, you know, not I'm not a thespian for by trade so I was a theater major that was uh, my thing and it, if, if you want to make fun of my acting go look check out grasping at straws part one you'll see it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I, I I never have but I've got a, a number of very good friends here in town who are aspiring actors uh and I've gone to a couple of acting classes and I watch what they do and I just couldn't do it it's part of the reason I have such a huge respect for actors and what they do and what they go through to be able to do what they do and do it well uh so no I uh, I have not all right, what's actually no no wait Ashley, have you ever taken acting lessons? I, I also was a theater major. Hey, yeah, and I took um, classes at Groundlings. Love really? It. Yeah. Awesome. But you're so unfunny. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Rude. <laughs> rude. You are hilarious. All right, what's next? All right, um, Devon Lott writes: Will you be doing your first non-spoiler and spoiler reviews of the year for Deadpool movie? Yeah, I, I, that's oh, yeah. yeah, that's. I mean, I didn't have a lot of people clamoring for us to do a spoiler review of Kung Fu Panda 3. Obviously, a lot of people were interested in the movie. Just that's not one you kind of right. want to spoil review for. I'm very much looking forward to seeing Hail Caesar. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to go see that tomorrow night. Yep. But it, that's not the type of movie that everybody's really clamoring for a spoiler review for. You'll see us review it probably. Uh, but Deadpool, yeah, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that's the first spoiler view of the year, right? I yeah, mean, we're going to do a non-spoiler one later this week, and yeah. then a spoiler one for when we can actually talk about yeah, it. Yeah, when spoiler. the day the movie yeah. comes yeah. out, we'll do yeah. release that. Perfect. It's, yeah, it's a no-brainer. All right, what's next? Chad Shrevis writes, if Fantastic Beasts does well, would it lead to a Harry Potter reboot? <sighs> reboot? No. New movies? I've always thought there's a possibility. Look, money talks. I don't care what people say that, oh, no, no, JK said, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Spielberg and Lucas said after Indiana Jones 3, never will there be another Indiana Jones film. And right. We kind of wish they stuck to that. But uh, money talks. And I've always felt that at some point, JK is going to remember those great days when not two dump trucks full, full of money backed up and dumped cash over her lawn like they do right now, but the days when 10 dump trucks full of money would back up under her lawn and dump everything out. You see, those were good days. Um, I, I just got to believe that at some point it's going to happen. Fantastic Beats will do well. Now, will it be a billion dollar movie worldwide? I doubt it, but it doesn't need to be a billion dollar movie worldwide to do really well. So I think it's regardless. I think regardless of how fast, I'll, I'll go as far as saying this. I would almost wager that if Fantastic Beast does not do well, and let's be honest, it will, but let's say it doesn't do well, 
I would almost think that would increase the chances that a prop that proper Harry Potter sequels would come because they're gonna go, yeah, we gotta get back on this Potter money train. And clearly it's not just the Potter universe, it's Potter. And we gotta get back to that. So um that's kind of how I'm seeing it right now. I might change my mind by tomorrow though. Anyway, Christian, what do you think? No reboot. Don't reboot. You don't have to reboot. No be because no, you don't no not necessary because you can get this and I think is this set for a trilogy? This the Fantastic, Fantastic Beats? Beats? Yeah. They're talking about the so. yeah. You would yeah. say if, if the first one's it's popular. Quad makes trilogy. forty million opening yeah. weekend. Quad trilogy. You, would there's there's no you would assume you're gonna see a lot more of it. Eddie Redmayne looks like he fits right into that universe. Really so does. I'm super Super excited about that, and I hear great things from just little previews that people have seen. Um, but I'm with you, man. I want to see those stinking kids as adults, the Harry yeah. Potter and the rest of them. Yeah, I want to see them later on, whether or not they're sending their kids to Hogwarts and they've got to figure stuff out. And I think they were. To I mean, look at look at the Force Awakens. You can totally do it. I mean, yeah. it's, you're looking at one of the most popular franchises of all time. If J.K. Rowling can come up with a story with Harry and and Ron and Hermione and all of them and tell us 20, 30 years later, I'm, I'm in. You know she's going to do it. Yeah. I mean, look at Lucas. He was like, we're done. The sixth one, it's over. I've told my story. Cut to, we just saw the seventh one. The, something we thought we'd never see. Right. So I, I wouldn't put any wagers against seeing like the adult Potter and uh, his friends with their kids in another 20 years. Right. Why not? Right. It would be great. I'm sure everyone will want to do it, especially Radcliffe and everyone else will be like, yeah, let's put the, get those wands back like 20 years later. Yeah. Everyone will be down for it. I want to see Fantastic Beats with, uh, with Idris <laughs> Elba. Fantastic Beats like, of riding, the Nation. He's yeah. riding a dragon, rapping <laughs> to laser swords. I'm on fire. Yeah, I mean, I can't wait to see that hip hop movie. <laughs> All right, what's next? Josh Feldman writes, any actors that you once thought were the same person? Yes, I have to think. Um, okay, for, for limited time, this is going back years, but Kurt Russell and um, uh, uh, Dennis Quaid. Then Dennis Quaid. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, I had Felicity Jones recently and Alicia Vikander for a little bit. And now I'm starting to kind of piece them piece them away. <laughs> I had Emily Blunt and Eva Green just for a, yeah. about oh, a six can, month yeah, period with maybe a Rachel Weiss sub thing flipping around. But that's about all I can remember. There, there are other ones for sure. I just can't. I, I, I would every once in a while I would I don't know why I would but I would I would often confuse for a period of time John Lezugamo and uh, Michael Pena for whatever stupid reason no justification for that uh, yeah so those are two really big ones to me all right what's next Nick Michalak writes if you could take one movie car on a test drive which would it be no DeLoreans allowed oh, all right, all right. Keep good, up good, good all asterisks right. on that, right. that the original Batmobile I'm on it that's, that's what I would do Oh man! I go the weapons buggy and Megaforce. Nice. That's the one I would go. Steve McQueen's car and bullet. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's a nice one. All right, two more. All right, Cameron Belgrade writes: Will we ever see a De Niro Scorsese movie again? Yeah, I mean De Niro Scorsese and I believe Robert or uh, Al Pacino have been talking ah. for a while about doing another gangster movie with. Um, not me. <laughs> Leonardo no. Christian Harloff no, no uh, who's who's the guy from Goodfellas uh, Joe Pesci Ray Liotta. yes with Joe, oh, Pesci. Um, Joe Pesci there's been talk for a long time yeah. about a, a mobster movie that was, I think is based on a true story they've been talking about doing it for years now put still the Caprio in, the in there too man but they're, they're still talking about it so I, I think eventually that movie's going to happen I sure think. why not I would like to see that yeah I think it's going to happen too I think it's, it's a, gr a greatest hits type thing we were just talking about with J.K. Rowling you have yeah. them all come back together again and then use the new talent that he's using as well with the DiCaprio and that's why De Niro's doing like Dirty Grandpa on all these other poopy movies because he knows he's got he's that got one it. in the bag yeah. Yeah. I got that one in the bag I'm just yeah. going to collect there some right, that is another one uh, the actors that you confuse <laughs> to each other uh, uh, Joe Pesci and Idris Elba all the time cannot just uh, get the two straightened out uh, uh, alright last question Jonathan Peck writes, what movies do you think will be a surprise box office hit in 2016? I don't underestimate ID for the BFG and Warcraft. Well, I, I don't think anybody's underestimating Warcraft or uh, BFG could be one that flies under the radar, actually, yeah, very much. I think there are a lot of people expecting ID for well, it's not called ID4 anymore. It's Independence Day yeah. 2. Uh, Whatever. Electric Boogaloo. Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> um, I think there are a lot of people underselling that movie. And I'm going to tell you right now, that movie's going to open big. BFG? Not, no, no uh, Independence Day. Independence Day. It is not going to open to $200 million big. Don't get me wrong. But it will open big. And uh, now whether or not it's going to be good or bad, who knows? We're going to have to wait and is see. Is it opening on July 4th? 
That's a good question. Because if it's sure. opening on July fourth, I'd get. It. I think it would just make money off of that. Yeah, alone. I think so too. But if it's like May thirteenth, forget it. I think it's gonna be a giant bomb. I think it's an easier. I think it's it is summertime, but I think it's easier to, to like the movies in that summertime could June have twenty fourth by the June. way. Yeah, that's a so week or two before July fourth. I think okay. it's do well. I'll tell you one that I think is gonna not do mega numbers, but I think it's gonna do better, and especially the fact that it still has a relatively unknown, even though big stars in it as well. Um, Eddie the Eagle. I think Eddie the Eagle is going to wind up making a little bit more than people thought. And I think this it's is going to be a feel-good film. I think so, and I think it's going to have a little of that. Even though he's direct, he's producing it. I think it's got a little bit of that Vaughn magic right now. Because mm. look at First Class and and also First Class Kickass. Even though the first one didn't make money, it still became a kind of a a big hit around. I guess for fans as well too. Um, so I think Eddie the Eagle might turn out to be one people are talking about. Not a mega hit, just something that people are are talking. The about. trailer has been. The trailer is yeah. very good. It's it, the trailer got people talking. It's yeah. a feel good kind yep. of trailer. Funny. You're immediately cheering for the guy and the whole bit. And yeah. it's going to do well in Canada because that was in the Calgary Olympics that that happened. I still remember. I was a little kid when that all went down in Calgary, but. Everybody was talking about Eddie the Eagle. Yeah. He was the story of those Olympics. And I think you're right. I think it's going to carry more than some people think. Hey, guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.